Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Friday edition of the Working Lunch. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, the ominous music. I'll just turn that. Down. The ominous music is uh, uh, in reference to War of the Worlds. Uh, I was asking on Facebook this morning if you were going to write a book about 2020, what would your first line of the book be? Uh, and of course, there was variations on it was the worst of times, it was the worst of times, or we're doomed, uh, or uh, any number of other things. Uh, so uh, 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 with that in mind, uh, uh, we are uh, having a bit of fun this afternoon. Uh, we have a very, very special guest with us. I'm just going to bring uh, Elke on screen. Uh, my very special guest, my very special pal, uh, Elke Holland. How the devil are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good to see you. I'm very well, thanks. All the better for seeing you, my dear, I have to say. That was going to be my line. You stole it. <laughs> you like getting there first, don't you? It's a male trait. You know, you? So I, I, I don't like to give uh, give things away too much uh, with, with ladies, but on checking your profile, and I hadn't really thought about it before, I think we're almost exactly the same age. I think we're both about 33 or 34-ish. Yeah, what was the next subject on the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. So, uh, LK, I have to say, on, on the working lunch, the working lunch is on uh, lunchtime every day, 1 p.m., uh, and we have almost 500 people re registered to watch the show. Uh, all seven uh, uh, people are watching live right now. Uh, no, it's, it's quite a bit more than that. But uh, we always ask at 1 o'clock uh, uh, every day of the week, uh, the people who have joined us, uh, let's just have a quick look. We've got uh, we've got Louise, we have uh, Martin Lee, uh, Ian, oh, it's yourself and uh, Adam and a, a few others. Can I ask what have you had for lunch today? Anyone uh, anyone there with uh, with some uh, some comments? What, what have you had for your lunch, Elke? Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> I, didn't on, didn't woman. I didn't get around to it. Anyway, what I'm trying to having on, on a Friday lunchtime. What's yeah, no, yeah. Got a liquid lunch, got squashed. Liquid lunch. <laughs> that looks like a, a, a glass of schlur, if you don't mind me saying. Do you remember yeah, schlur? I do remember schlur. Yeah, Christmas <laughs> special. No, I know it's the wrong colour of what you normally see me with, which is very brown. With scotch. Well, I, I do like, I do favour a rosé, I have to say. Really? Uh, oh, God, look, no, that's for, definitely not alcoholic, sadly. I, I, I'm, on, I'm on the, uh, the, the fermented water. Uh, so that's. Mm. Now, let, let me just double check. Martin Lee, uh, uh, Master Chef Master, Mar Martin Lee, as his, his full name is, uh, as he said, what he's had for his lunch, we're going to have to find out. Uh, oh, wow. Almost cough out his sarnie and uh, pick an associate. Uh, oh, Martin was looking up your multi value, uh, at which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be asking about just shortly. Uh, anyone else had a nice lunch? Chicken ginger stir fry from Shafiq. Shafiq always has the best lunch. Uh, we all, uh, do you know, we sh once lockdown is completely off, we should I'm all. Going to Shafiq's for lunch. We should all go to Shafiq's uh, and have a, 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 a splendid spread. Uh, Louise's crackers with cottage cheese. Seriously delish. Crackers and cottage cheese. Really? Uh, not salad. Be uh, or Ian, Ian Franklin. No, Ian Franklin. My heart of my own heart. Uh, the lunch of kings, beans and toast. No That's hangover fodder. That's Saturday morning. I, mean, I would, I would have beans and toast morning, noon, and night for every meal. I could live in beans and toast. I, I, so long as there was an occasional trifle thrown in, uh, the beans and toast would do me for life. And Martin Lee crab, avocado, and rocket sarnie. That's pretty fancy. And Graham, Graham Palfrey Smith. I said, oh, my homemade shepherd's pie, no less, with squash and potato. Oh, hold on a second, Graham. Shepherd's pie includes mash. So are you saying that you have mash alongside your mash on on the side? That uh, that's not right, surely. There's something going wrong. That's like putting tomato ketchup on a tomato. That's the, the gods would be angry with you. That. Uh, so Elke, getting back to yourselves. Uh, this is Friday afternoon. The date is the 17th of July, 2020. Uh, it's a momentous year. Uh, how are you today? How are you feeling in yourself? It's Friday. So you're just thankful that it's Friday? I love Fridays. I'm going out too much anyway, so yes, I am looking forward to Friday oh. night. So are you uh, are you going out? Out is this proper out? Are you going for a meal? Are you going to the pub? Now that everyone, well, I say everyone, now, now that most people can. Elke, I'm afraid you're breaking up a little bit. Can you uh, can you say that again? I tell you what, Elke, can can you on your screen if you hover over your face? 
above your head, it'll say HD in so green. We're going to green again. again. If you can, if you can click on the HD, and that will change your bandwidth requirement. Uh, we're going oh. to the green. Elk will be back in a moment. Uh, apologies, everyone, for uh, for the the, the brief uh, uh, sojourn whilst Elke uh, reconnects. Uh, so yeah, this afternoon has uh, here we go. I can see you. Can I hear you? How's your broadband? <laughs> close the case. I don't know. It's an yeah, open. That's okay. We'll close the case. <laughs> I'm sorry. Try not to look at the mess. That's perfectly fine. Uh, oh, I can see. That, I can see you've got a guide you on the wall. Yeah, I can, I can see you've got a guide Sorry? on the to, to help you know which day comes after another. Uh, you've got Monday to Friday. Yeah, they're all a bit empty, though. Yeah, they're all a bit empty uh, at the moment. But that's because uh, I've just moved office, okay? So I haven't put anything okay. up there. But it's also not the most active market, so. So how how new is your office? Um, I'm not officially here till the 1st of August, so I'm currently running two offices, and I managed to pretty much get the internet in here this week on Monday. So the week we were still building the furniture, which is Super. actually quite nice. I couldn't bring the furniture from before because it was too big. <laughs> Do you know, months ago I was talking about uh, during lockdown uh, that uh, people would, would metaphorically be painting the floor. You know, in factories when they have a they have a shutdown in the summer, everyone goes on holiday and the maintenance team paint the floor, uh, doing all the things that you can't normally do because you're too busy. You, yeah. You've been doing some of that. Uh, no, it was a led economically, needs master. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I shan't try. But no, no, no. you roll with the tides. You know, you go yeah, the same tides. If you like, that's the way it works. And so, else, uh, large. <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know you, and I like to think I know you a little, but for anyone who doesn't, shame on them, first of all. But uh, can you give us a bit of a background on uh, or to people who've been meeting you for the first time? What would you tell them? Yourself. Um, about, this. Uh, about me, the person, or what I do for a living? Uh, both. Okay, me, the person, probably totally mad is how other people would sum me up and Absolutely. talk a bit too fast. So apologies in advance. Uh, mm -hmm. For a living, I'm a recruiter through and through. Started in recruitment in '86, ran my first business in '87, sold wow. after 18 months and started another. And basically, you also get known as serial entrepreneur. Mm. as I started a number of other businesses and sold them along the through. But primarily I specialise in multi-value, which I think it was Martin who looked up earlier, uh, which is the old pick, which is a very specialist niche, but it's hiding away in lots of industries. So I'm very loyal to them and they're very loyal to me. So can I backtrack a little bit on that, first of all? Yeah. Uh, so serial entrepreneur, uh, you're the sort of person who, 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 frankly, I don't think would take too well to being told what to do, which is why you like to be in charge. Uh, <laughs> So, so uh, whatever someone told you to do, you would go and do the opposite. But uh, uh, getting on to, I I so well. uh, yeah, getting on to your particular version of IT recruitment. Uh, going back to when you started, IT would have been a world away from what it is now. But what exactly, yeah, yeah. What, what exactly is multi-value? How, how do you define that? Uh, easiest way for everybody to understand is to say it's the oldest of the NoSQL databases. So it's okay. been around for over 50 years and before people had even heard of NoSQL. So it's uh, okay. most people only talk about hierarchical and relational databases at that time. Multi value mm. is a little bit different and special. Okay. It sounds like it sounds like an offer that you would be having at, at uh, ASDA, uh, I have to say. But uh, multi value is actually it's, it's, it's an IT uh, discipline in, uh, in, in programming. Yeah, it's used a lot at the moment these days. I mean, everything changes through the years. Technology does as well, which is why I love working okay. with tech and tech firms yeah. um, and solutions because it powers so much in business. And has, mm. it does that more now than it used to back in 86, really. People rely on it more yeah. heavily. And I think they are so, now as well during COVID. So people haven't moved on from that technology. It's as, it's as, as strong as it ever was or more. It is. I'd say it grows and it morphs with it. So any software, if, even if you look at a recruitment solution, any recruitment solution that was back in 1986, they didn't offer hyperlinks. They couldn't link with LinkedIn. They didn't interface. Mm. So every system has to morph a little bit and grow. So if anything, multi-value is very much data warehousing. Um, is very, very good for that. Mm. Um, fast information, rapid development. 
So it's so really popular. If you've been in this sector all this time, uh, uh, have have more companies come in to try and compete with you through the years? Um, over the years, at one point, there were five agencies which specialised mm -hmm. in multi-value, and I owned yeah. one and a half of them. Um, <laughs> as the years go on, it was quite nice. When people say, obviously, we'll go to the big boys who've been around a while, and I used to go, oh, who would that be? And they'd name it, and i go, that's fine, because I still own half of them. Crack on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was quite good. Yeah, it yeah. It was quite entertaining, yeah. actually. Um, it's good to find them. Now, them. no. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a niche. To be honest, I sort of fell into it. And it was long before the recruitment trend was to be in a niche. Back in 86, 88 again, when I started Prospectus, uh, lots of friends, recruiters, business people all said to me, you need to diversify. You must do more. Otherwise, mm. you won't survive. And actually, strangely enough, I survived and they didn't. So I, I, I think I, I, if you build a strong client base, even if it's diverse, yeah. you just need to work closely with your client base. I know we glossed over it a little earlier on, but I, so I started in recruitment in 87, uh, but you must have been, what, 21, 22, starting your own business in recruitment uh, in 86. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's oh, really yeah. remarkable. At the age of 24, I was running five businesses. Yeah, because in 87, when I started, I'd be calling companies and I'd be explaining what a recruitment agency did because so few employers knew what a recruitment agency was. So you had to explain the company and the service and then try and sell it uh but uh, at the same time you were running your own business that's quite phenomenal i have to say i hadn't really realized that before well it's quite entertaining um because of home issues i couldn't actually go to university the way the grants were done i had to be out of home yeah. for three years before yeah. i could get a grant in my own name um and mm -hmm. then go to university so i was educated up to A levels very well and then got a bit lost really so mm -hmm. I had to take jobs to fill in. And then by the time I started running my own businesses, I was then employing people, you know, friends of mine who had gone to university and I was employing them. Yeah. So it was a bit weird. It was very weird. So very you, you, you know, I was, it was an alternative way. I never did yeah. go back to university. I, 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 I never did go to university. I uh, didn't get the grades, but uh, it was very weird when, when everyone else was at university, I was working in, a variety of sales jobs. Uh, so in the in the pub on a Friday night, I was, I was the one who had cash, uh, and they were they were brassic. Uh, but I have to say, I was I was always a bit jealous, thinking oh, I wouldn't mind some letters after my name. Uh, but uh, uh, they've had uh, varying successes over the years since then. So I think I think I've done all right. I think I'll be just fine, and and you too. I was going to say, I mean, I I agree with the university. I agree with training, and I certainly agree mm. with people being educated. But I don't necessarily think university is the only route. In fact, I'm, yeah. if you hunt online, you'll find I'm an advocate for apprenticeships. And yeah. I've actually started to create an apprenticeship. That's one of the businesses I'm running at the moment as well. Oh, yeah. Um, specifically, yeah, for multi value. So it mm. will run with uh, I presented the Apprentice of the Year Award in, at the end of January for Thames Valley area. That's fantastic. Um, oh, it's lovely. And in fact, do you remember one of the True Londons where we mentored mm. the university grads and stuff? You yeah, know, looking and helping people into work is something that you can't be a recruiter and not be interested in people's lives and how they work and earn a living yeah. and careers. So, right. taking the apprenticeship scheme, I'm looking at bolting on a specific mm -hmm. technical module to teach them the multi value yeah. technology to help employers recruit apprentices. Okay, can I just double check people who are listening? Can you hear LK? Okay, let me know if, uh, if LK is a bit on the quiet side. Louise mentioned that you might be. You might be a bit quiet. Anyone on the side? Can you hear Elke? Let us know if, uh, if you think Elke might be a bit quiet. I know I can be a bit boomy. Uh, but uh, uh, so g g carrying on from there, El Elke, uh, you mentioned True London. I need to say this because it's something that we're not allowed to do these days. Uh, oh, Adam says a little. Uh, maybe speak. Maybe sh you use your outside voice, dear. Uh, but <laughs> something that we're not allowed. Something we're not allowed to uh, to, to to say. Uh, or to do much these days. I've never been called quiet. <laughs> that, that, that's a new one. So, Elke, when we met at True London and a number of True Londons for, uh, for several events, when I met you uh, and you met me, uh, we'd have a big kiss on the lips. Uh, and this happened multiple times over a period of a couple of years. And I thought, what well, is this? You said you'd never tell. I never had you done a kiss and tell person. 
these London people in their, their, their modern ways. Uh, and only after a couple of years, I've met you again, give you a kiss, uh, and, and someone beside me said, well, that's, uh, that's quite unusual. And I said, oh, no, that, 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 that's just what Elkie does. Uh, but of course, <laughs> of course, all the you, but you, th you thought it was just what I did. So we were both being polite. Obviously, the first time, one of us, we were both going for a cheek, and one of us had turned, and it done in the kiss and looks. But of course, these days, we wouldn't be allowed. We, barely a handshake, barely a fist bump. These days, you'd have to just wave from across the room. I still have the terrible habit, so I do my mwah, mwah, uh. Yeah. And that's my yeah. way now. Not the There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, do you know I've not touched another person, barring uh, uh, Mrs. O'Donnell, uh, since uh, since February this year, uh, and I may have clipped uh, young young uh, Cosmo around the ears once or twice, but other than that, I've not touched a single person, uh, <laughs> which which I'm sure I'm sure the authorities are quite happy to hear, especially given that restraining order. Uh, so, uh, uh, Elke, uh, on uh, on. Uh, I'm going to start asking about my love life. Are you? What, not unless you want me to. Would you like me to uh, to probe uh, in no. that? Uh, no, no. Let, let's let's not go there in that case. You can volunteer anything you like. It's, it's Friday. There are no rules in a Friday show. No rules whatsoever. So, business wise, let me just ask you very briefly. And, and I, I know that everyone's had ups and downs, mostly downs. But from March to now, how has business been for you? Uh, challenging. Yeah. Would you use the word shit? In that, um, yes. <laughs> and I'd also possibly preface it with incredibly shit. Okay. It's <laughs> challenging because I'm dealing with things that I wouldn't normally deal with. Um, mm -hmm. And my job seems to not be what I'm used to doing, which is recruiting. I may run the organisation mm -hmm. here, but I still yeah. am a hands-on recruiter because at the end of the day, that's my forte, that's my strength, and that's my passion and what I love. And I like to think I'm quite good at it. So, is it hands on recruitment that gives you your buzz at the end of the day? Is that, is that the thing that you get the most kick from? Yes. Yeah. Love yeah. it. So, there, you know, so, I love placing helping clients' projects come to fruition. I mm. mean, it sounds so corny, but I actually do. I love working mm. with clients. And don't forget, some of them I've known for 30 years. So, I've gone through yeah. good times, I've gone through bad times with them, um, you know seen quite a few through numerous companies, startup mm -hmm. sales, and I feel very lucky to be taken in, if you like, into their inner circle to discuss For me, the, things. Being so close to those clients, you, you'll see the, 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 the struggles that they'll have had in the past few months, and you, you'll be supporting them to, uh, to, to get through that. Uh, uh, the thing that, that occurs to anyone who, well, especially in, in recruitment, because we have that overview of business, uh, we know that everything is interconnected. We know that one business leans on another, leans on another, and everyone is employed by someone, and so on. So, so, so that that, that uh, patchwork quilt of connections is what makes things work. And when everyone dips as as they have, other than you know small small pockets, uh, then everyone feels it. And being able to pick up again is not straightforward. In your sector, what would you term as the uh, the green shoots that you're looking for in, for things picking up again? confidence yeah we'll give the green shoots yes at the moment i'm finding because don't forget i go right the way across sectors so i'm not just manufacturing not just retail yeah. not just finance yeah um, but what i am noticing and that's across retail finance and also mail order believe it or not mm. um even though companies some of them haven't been hit as hard financially they've obviously taken a hit uh some have actually been more profitable than last year they are still oh, yeah. holding the it yeah but they're holding back on IT projects. They're not moving forward with them. They're just yeah. stopping. So they've literally, they, you know, they say they need the work, but they're not doing it. I mean, yeah. I've heard um, companies splitting off. Uh, there was a large project, obviously I won't name any client names, but they were looking at selling part of their business. COVID hit and they scrapped the entire project and they keep wow. the whole segment. I know. Mm. So everything seems to be waiting. People mm. are waiting to see what to do before they go ahead. You know, again, in the city, they were looking at a major change on a, a back system, back office system, and mm. that went to stop. There's rumours at the moment, or there's talk that they might now start to move forwards with that. 
but again, mm. it's still only a mite. Yeah. So, uh, aside from recruitment, I know that uh, you, you've you've also got a, a, a business in in uh, uh, lettings uh, that's been going for a long time. Uh, and in fact, uh, you you were a finalist for the 2016 2017 Landlord and Lettings Awards. Now, I have to ask you about that because, of course, news this week is that. Uh, uh, the country, or, or certainly England, is opening up. Things are open for business, uh, and, uh, and things are perking up across the board there. Now, does that affect you in that sense, or is it different types of lettings altogether? No, it, again, everything's always hand in hand. At the moment, I mean, I to put it in perspective, I buy properties, sometimes do them up, renovate them, generally tend to keep them and let them. Okay, uh, Occasionally mm. I'll do something and turn it, but there's not as much money unless you go for a big scale on that these days um yeah. the the lettings are very well both markets lettings and sales are very busy mm -hmm. because after lockdown people want to change so really? credit to the estate yeah credit to the estate agents actually i would say mm -hmm. they were one of the first and i know everybody loves to hate recruiters and they love to hate estate agents which are the same <laughs> I will, sorry that's the way it is um mm -hmm. but i would give them the utmost credit for them getting out there to do their job. They're getting houses on the market. They're reassuring the individuals who have the houses. They were doing virtual viewings, even through yeah. lockdown, because I was looking yeah. at both uh, purchases. I always keep my eye in and an eye out, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so I did virtual viewings. They were very good, the way they used technology yeah. for that, and they got back out yeah. there. The minute we were allowed out, they started doing face-to-face, -face, and they didn't make you feel like an alien. They mm. guided you through quite happily. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, obviously they were secure and they said, you know, you meet them. This is the way we will do it. And they were brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So it was busy. And I think COVID is making people want to move. I Some have to say, I'm, 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 down I'm really surprised. Well, the, the downsizing, I understand, but I'm, I'm really surprised because I, I thought that with so many people being furloughed, some people being laid off, and increasingly more people will be getting laid off. That uh, that would roll on to the property market. Values would be suppressed. Uh, uh, maybe rentals would go up, but uh, you know sales would go down. People might have to downsize and accept lower lower uh, sums for the houses they were selling than they would have done a year ago. Uh, so you, you reckon the market's more buoyant than expected? At the moment. It seems to be, I mean, I can look to buy somewhere, but at the moment mm. they haven't sunk yeah. enough for me to move forwards, which sounds terrible. And I'm sorry, everybody. Um, mm. not trying to be mercenary. Um, but I think if, if you cash more, spend, could this be a good time to buy? You could snap up a bargain or two. Yeah, not yet. Okay. Because okay. the market is pretty much still the same. And mm. those who are smaller, they want to move up, they want the gardens, they want more space. People are having to, they're seeing the future as work from home. So they want yep. their own office. You know, you've got execs that are fed up and having kids in the background and the wife dragging them out. I mean, the number of calls I've made. Is... Yeah, so people want yeah, to hire their extra room for an office. Yeah, so they will upsize for that. Um, and don't forget they're saving money because they're not commuting and they feel, some of them feel that it's going to carry on. You've got those yeah. who are in flats who want a garden or a balcony, so they're moving as well. Yeah. Uh, at, the, yeah. at the end of the day, it's only when people start to spend money will business recover. And that's all mm. the way through. I mean, I saw something today. I don't know if anyone else saw it. Did anyone see the video, actually? Cards galore. Um, it's, uh, Chaffee, they've been going 30 years. He wrote Cards galore. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. He was, yeah, uh, yeah, he was, he was, he was. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and they did a, a YouTube. Very succinct and very true. It's like to do our bit for recovery, we need to go and spend in the pubs. You know, yeah. we need yeah. to go and buy something. Um, Would you say it's your, is it your patriotic duty to go and spend? Most of it, if you don't, if money doesn't start moving, business won't go, and then I'll be hungry. So yeah, go spend, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> go spend. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But then I'm just like everybody else. I haven't gone shopping. I haven't particularly, you know, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone shopping yeah, so, during the pandemic. Yeah, so people are maybe been a lot more cautious than usual. Uh, you might have been spending a lot on, on webcams and microphones and, and, and so on, but uh, and and upping your, uh, your 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 Netflix subscription. But 
you're not going people aren't going crazy or spending on on clothes and cars and all sorts of things that they were before uh maybe it's, because, it's, it's understandable because they don't want to be silly and they don't know what's around the corner yeah because as yeah. everybody thinks i don't think the redundancies have even started yet yeah yeah well yeah certainly everyone i know is treating every pound as a hostage uh, and yes. only spending when they absolutely have to uh so uh, moving on from that you you uh, uh I do think I'm giving too much away to say uh, you you live on the river. Is it the River Thames that you you live on? Yes, it is. Yep. So it's in terms river. of traffic on the river, in terms of people uh, mm -hmm. getting out and about, uh, are you seeing much more people going out there that, that, that frankly have never done this before in their new kayaks that they've just <laughs> bought from Decathlon? <laughs> yeah. Please, can I say one thing for anyone out there who's got a stand-up paddleboard, a kayak? Yeah. Please don't tell me you're fresh and new on rowing boats. <laughs> but please. It is different, okay, than the road. On the road, you drive on the left. On the river, you stay on the right. Oh, really? I did not know that. No, so people are buying all these things. It's like a game of going out on a boat. It's like navigating an asteroid field hmm. in the biggest starship <laughs> you've got. It's yeah. like, oh, my and God. And there's no way you can't, you can't turn very quickly. Well, it's not even that. They're on the wrong side of the river, and people have no idea. They're creating wash, so you've got... I mean, mm -hmm. anybody, the man, they, when the river opened for exercise, that's how I normally get my exercise, but they shut the rivers. Yeah. So I was yeah. a good little girl, I just watched it going, oh, I want to go, you know, and I wasn't allowed out cycling, walking, anything like that. So the river would have been mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah. Um, but I waited, and then everybody had. So you've got stand up paddle boards, you have sometimes a guy with a dog on the front. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes an adult with a child, and then there's two yeah. of them, family four going down. It's lovely to see. But they're on the mm -hmm. wrong side of the river. Yeah. The and you get everybody, you get the groups of sort of like to put it in perspective, you then mix out with the five or six lads that are going on the lads' holiday that mm. go, Oh, we're not going on holiday. Let's go buy a boat. Yeah. So they've gone down, they've bought a boat, a motorboat. They have no clue whatsoever, and they don't yeah. even know which side of the river to go on. So do you have watch. do you have a boat at the bottom of the garden? I know you've got the paddle boat and such. Could you be commuting from your jetty at the bottom of the garden? I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would yeah, that not yeah. be a nice thing to do? Um, I'd probably kayak or paddleboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, was, I was. I am a bit of a nut on boats. Okay, I now <laughs> only have one motorboat. Okay, and I do have kayaks, and I'm a keen rower, but I'm still not on the water on the rowing. Are you are you qualified to conduct uh, wedding ceremonies, uh, Captain uh, Captain Elke? No. No. <laughs> no. But I'm quite able um, to throw people overboard. <laughs> I, I, I was I was in decathlon this morning, and uh, they've got an amazing array of uh, of kayaks. I didn't buy a kayak, but I did buy a tent. Uh, I have a little tent already, but I thought I'll get a bigger tent because we're going off for a, a drive tomorrow uh, up up north. We're going to go to John O'Groats. We're going to go as far as we can. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, uh, we'll find somewhere decent to camp. The only thing is, is, uh, is when making any kind of travelling, is uh, there are no toilets uh, that are uh, that are open on campsites. So, uh, and and the B and Bs are not opening because that's in someone's house. So that's why we've got a go to tent. Well, actually, I was going to say because I spent a lot of time on the south coast in Wittering for ten years, um, yeah. between the two places, between Surrey and the south coast. And I went down mm. there when lockdown was lifted. I picked a grey day so there wouldn't be loads of people, and I went yeah. there and I was spoke to some of the locals I've known for ten years, and mm. they were saying that they're missing obviously the campsites opening. So this was before they all opened, but the campsites now opening, they're not opening the toilets or the shower blocks, which we understand. So they're not taking mm. bookings for tents. Unless you have, which is why when I stopped off, I looked at the motor homes, yeah, and everything sold. It's really hard, you know. Their mm. inventory again is down to next to nothing. Same as boats, all gone. Yeah. So people are spending, but just on those items, I think. So if you if you got a port a porta potty, then uh, <laughs> you're, oh, come on, you're all right. There's loads of shiwis. <laughs> there's a whole yeah, array yeah. of things you can do. There's always and a I, bucket. I, I, Actually, you can take a bucket with you. And they do solar showers that you can hang on a tree. They're quite good. Okay. Okay. So, I'll, uh, well, we, we won't be away for that long, but uh, I think we'll be fine. It's only going to be me, her, and doors, and Junior. So, uh, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn up the Skibo Castle and see if the lit is in, uh, and uh, we'll try and be as presentable as possible. 
Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to go. Uh, so uh, in the news this week, uh, LK, I have to ask, what have you seen in the news this week that's caught your eye? That's uh, with um, regards to, uh, to, to recruitment and employment and, and all things uh, to do with, uh, uh, with COVID? Um, well, I would say very much the announcements today by Boris. Mm -hmm. So Boris said well, we're going to be ready, everything back to normal for Christmas? Yeah, and he's saying that from August he's going to start saying to, it's up to employers if they want to call their staff back to the office and as long as it's safe. So, you know, I mean, I'm speaking to employers and they're saying, well, so-and-so wants to continue to work from home, but they don't get that their output is actually 20% of what I get out of them in the office. So they think they're fine and they're going to carry on working from home. I said, quite frankly, that's not working for us as a business. Do you know, it's quite refreshing to hear that because so many people are saying, oh, I'm more productive from home. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I, they feel I they are, but that doesn't mean that they are. I find that hard to believe. I think you would get more done when you turn up to work, you get into character and you get shit done. Oh, God, that's, I mean, people say to me, why do you need an office? It's like, well, actually, because I like an office. So I've been yeah. coming to the office every day for the last two weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mainly because I had to do a move and this week just to test and check bits yeah. and pieces and stuff. Um, and I definitely achieve more yeah. coming in. Uh, my office is a lot better. I've got a beautiful office at home. I mean, yeah, yeah I do. My office is, is, is two streets uh, about a mile from my house at uh, 10 minutes, and uh, I've been coming here every day. But of course, in all the time I've been coming here, I'm the only person in the building, so I'm not communing with anyone, in fact, less than if I was in the house. Uh, but I'd go barking mad at home, honestly. Uh, and I, I can only imagine that. There are plenty of people like me who they just wouldn't get stuff done. No, I mean, I, I live at home uh, with my child and mm. it's, you know, he's a, a big boy. He's 17. But realistically, mm. he's a teenager. And when they want something, their world only exists around them. So they want it now. Yeah. yeah. The worst bit was finding Groundhog Day in the kitchen. Every time I went to make <laughs> tea, I had to just clean more food. He's six foot six, so he does eat a lot. Um, yeah. But there's another snack. And compulsive behaviour, I have to clean it as I go. So yeah. I was groundhog day in the kitchen. I'm thinking, I can't do this. I was going nuts. Mm. So, so I went without with, drink. With, with, with Boris and employers, yes, you can, you, can, you, you can ask people to come back. Can you insist that people come back or, or they're fired? Back to work or don't no, work? Um, you can call them back to the office. I was reading this today. You can mm. call them back to the office, I believe. Don't forget, I'm not an HR professional. We're all finding our way through this. Yeah. Um, there was an article I read which was, do I have to go if my employer calls me back? Mm. And the article said that you don't have to go if it's on grounds of health and safety. However, the employer does not need to pay you. Okay. Okay. So that's, 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 that's quite a hard middle ground. Well, yeah, we're not fired, but we're going to stop paying you. You still work well, for us, but we're not giving you any more money. Correct. Yeah. 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 That, uh, that's, quite, that's quite bizarre. Uh, we are replacing you with someone else, but you'll still be working for us. We just won't be paying you anything. Well, they had the choice of going to work, really. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand also that from the 1st of August that venues will be opening, so uh, 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 theatres, uh, uh, live bands, that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, I suppose all the, all the precautions will be attempted to be taken, but uh, the, August, the month of August is when the Edinburgh Festival would normally be on, and it's been called off this year. And it's the biggest global festival worldwide for for the arts, and it's not on. But I know I I, I know quite quite a few stand up comedians. I know that uh, more than a few will be taking a taking a saunter uh, to Edinburgh and hoping to put on I don't know comedy in the park or something, uh, not in an official way. But in London, the throbbing metropolis, uh, there has to be. There has to be far more plans for uh, for people to put on shows, to put on uh, performances, uh, and get get the theatres going again. But will people go back? Will they turn up? Will audiences go? I don't know. I mean, I've seen pictures. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone really knows, but I've seen pictures where cinemas and theatres have seats missed out in between. So mm. you know, a row of ten seats may only have you know two sets of or three sets of two people with seats in between. Yeah. Yeah. social distancing but again that's got to force the prices up because at the end of the day they have to stay in business yeah have you been out to a restaurant yet nope uh, is tonight going to be a restaurant night nope 
they're opening the pub, but I'm not going. I'm going to the green. What, what happens on the green? On the green, everybody brings their own chairs. Everybody brings their own drink, or you can walk okay. to um, yeah, the pub or the cricket and yeah. play, uh, do a takeaway. The cricket club actually has done really, really, really well. They put a, mm. a chess table out the front, and they're selling beer from there. And good, you know, good for them. Excellent. The the restaurant below me, my office is above uh, a halal steak restaurant, a, a, a pretty fancy halal steak restaurant. The only drawback is they don't sell alcohol for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, as I was leaving the office last night, there was a team of people waiting to go in, uh, and it looked like it was going to be chock a block. Uh, I hope they were all from the same family because they were all right next to each other, maskless, albeit they were outside. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the day when I can go in and have a, a, a slap up meal myself, but uh, oh, oh, soon it's spaced out, hopefully. I mean, I've done, I did, we did through lockdown actually, when we were allowed to gather in parks and things, we went to Bushy Park and there's a fantastic yeah. restaurant. And the, credit to them, and they're very lucky with their situation, uh, La Fiamma, and it's an Italian, and you'd order your food two hours before you went. And then yeah. you'd go into Bushy Park, have your picnic, your chairs, your vino. Then you'd go up to the window that they had in Bushy Park. Yeah. And the restaurant, which normally has a street entrance, would serve out of their back doors. Oh, okay. So you'd have a takeaway and eat it in the park. And mm. for this family, it was like pasta in a tin foil. And you're thinking, <laughs> okay, you know, you could go to m and buy some beautiful you know, picnic bits. But it was yeah. just felt really decadent. <laughs> oh my god I hadn't, you know it was just pasta i mean it wasn't yeah. very nice you know and pizzas but it was nice. some restaurants where where uh if, if you if you want the paella uh made to order then you you'll you'll tell them a couple of hours in advance of, of turning up so that uh, uh the food meets the meets the plate just at the right time uh yeah. so, so it would be similar to that i suppose yes i mean it, it, people it, businesses are changing and they've got to mm -hmm. So, so in, in, in terms of things that are going to be happening through the summer, that, that we're obviously we're just at the, this is the point where kids in uh, in England are now just taken normally taken off from school. Uh, in Glasgow, this is the Fair Friday. Uh, I don't know you, you wouldn't know what the Fair Friday is, but it's, it's a tradi traditional two week uh, uh, holiday in Glasgow. Uh, this is normally the start of the summer. Do you expect that, that uh, everything's going to get much busier from now on, both business and, and, and holidays and such? I'd like to, ho I hope so, yes. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually went to Chessington. I oh, yeah? To go and, no, I went to Chessington. The world of adventures. <laughs> yes, I hadn't been out. You've got to understand that I spent so long, actually, totally yeah. inside, not going anywhere, that I did go mm -hmm. very stir crazy. Um, and I just wanted to go and see the animals, thinking, very bad way of putting it. Uh, and it did what it did. Um, thinking, actually, you know, I live where I live and it's very pretty, uh, but mm. it's still full of walls. And I saw the animals, all the rides were shut, which then I went. But it's still quite sad to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the queues would be shorter, I suppose. But uh, well, there were no queues. Oh, no, the, there were queues. Because you have to be faced out. Yeah. Yeah. And just then um, the I went to. So on safari and that was funny oh yeah <laughs> yes because i went to the shop and you know you get when your kids grow up and you suddenly see someone with an active sort of like seven year old going in the shop as they all do but we all forget yeah. our kids did exactly the same and you yeah. see the mother with a basket okay with loads of stuff in it it's as though that kid mm. is so spoiled and it's yeah. not behaving that well either and you think oh my gosh but the mother's saying don't touch don't touch as we all did well, what yeah. do the mother now have to do? So I went around the shop because we forgot to have sun hat and it was really hot. And I'm thinking, mm. God, spoiled brat, as we do when the other kids are screaming, <laughs> forgetting, of course, that I did. And of course, she got to the checkout in front of us and all the toys and things and the glove puppets, things like that, in the basket, she was having yeah. to put in the discard basket. So it was me thinking very unkindly, what a spoiled brat, and it's still acting up, getting all this stuff. Mm. No, if the kid touched something, she had to put it in the basket, then take it out at the till. And just pay for one okay. item. <laughs> I used to go so at, um, at places like that. If I was at Alton Towers or, or I don't know, Disney, and you know, it was like a, a family with a kid acting up and was clearly a handful, I would often, you know, say to the, you know, the, the, the mum or the dad, do you want a hand? Because I know what it's like. I've had kids that age, the hundreds are. And I, so I, my inclination would be to, you know, maybe pick up a kid and, you know, walk them around or talk to them or, or whatever. Yes. And of course, you, you, 
there are plenty of reasons why you, you you wouldn't want to be doing that these days. But on top of that, COVID, you don't want to be touching anyone, never mind anyone anyone else's kids. And uh, it's it's a minefield, and kids don't know not to grab and touch and pick up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, it's, uh, I do, yeah. do magic and stuff, as I think you know, and balloons. And I think you mm. can't actually make balloons to give them to kids now. You can't, no. you know, if one of my friends has a grandchild or a child who's younger and still of balloon animal age, I used to make a load of balloons to their party and stuff for them. You and can't the balloon dog, then wipe it down and give it to the kid. You just can't do it. It's not, I don't know, it's not like cool, but it's, it's sad, actually. It is sad. Yeah. So, and I did feel very uncharitable, but it was only because there was so much in the basket that I thought, really? Mm. How come that child will have macked up? But I felt really bad. Right. Think about pantomime at Christmas, where uh, we're in the pantomime, they throw out sweets to the audience. They won't be able to do that anymore. No. <laughs> I'm no, just checking, no. checking, the, chat. Just checking the chat. Just checking the chat. Checking the chat on the side. Uh, let's see. Adam says COVID has it's still bad. Okay, let's skip over that. Uh, Graham says they do commute in the water in Amsterdam. Uh, I knew a fella who had uh, a house out on uh, Loch Oilhead, and he used to come his motorboat. Uh, up the River Clyde and park outside his plastics factory in Clyde Bank every day. Uh, that was a while ago. Uh, ben, Adam is going to Benidorm for a 50th do in September. Oh, can I just say, this week I managed to snag. Now, I might be a bit precipitate, but uh, I managed to snag three return flights to Venice in September uh, for 84 quid uh, from Glasgow. Uh, three return flights. Now, if I if I ultimately can't go, then you know I think I can I can write off eighty four pounds. But you know, eighty four pounds to Venice and back that's amazing. I'm assuming anyway, that's eighty four pounds each. No, for the three of us, oh, for wow. the three of us, return Glasgow Airport to Venice Airport. Uh, all I need to do now is find uh, some cheap accommodation. Uh, Ian Franklin very kindly has uh, put a link uh, on the right here, uh, toiletmap.org.uk. That's that's <laughs> that's going to be I'm really. Gonna that one. I'm going to take that uh, for uh, for the weekend. Uh, that'd be an idea. Graham, uh, 24 hours in Valencia. Uh, uh, is that how how much you have to order in advance for your paella? Uh, I suppose if you want if you want the the best paella, then I order on the day before. It does seem a bit extreme, but it better be a bloody good paella. Uh, and uh, 84 quid, amazing. Yeah, uh, if we get to go, it'll be stupendous. Uh, number number three son might not be able to come because fingers crossed by then he'll have gotten into bloody uni uh, because we don't know what the claim is going to result in uh, we don't know what the teachers are going to gift him by way of grades for his hires uh, because he's not been able to sit the exams uh, so he's in limbo uh, and this entire lockdown he's been mooching about the house uh, like a fart in a trance I have to say uh, and uh, he has no idea what's what's in front of him because it, 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 you know when you come out of an exam you think oh yeah I passed that or I've not passed that not a clue and uh, and, and going by his classwork it's in the lap of the gods what it's going to get uh, Peter P says what was the question the question was the question was uh, what's the meaning of life uh, the universe and everything and I think the answer is thirty seven is that is that the answer LK not sure. Still sure. Okay. So, okay, we're we're coming towards the end of our time. Can I ask, what do you have ahead of you for next week? What's your plans for the next seven days? What's going to be occurring uh, in the uh, oh. in the Holland household? In the Holland household over the weekend, I will go. I'm hoping to go shooting on Saturday because they've opened up the shooting, which is lovely. Shooting. And then, Superb. Um, and then on you the have anyone in mind that you're going to be shooting? Oh, plenty. I'd love to, but none that I will. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then next week, work-wise, back um, talking. And I did see something really interesting through when you sort, when you're moving from one office to another, you have to go through an awful lot of stuff. And yeah. there was um, Mr. Savage, who does the Savage Sprint. Correct, was, Savage. Yes. Yeah, there were two things I took from the notes while I archived them off. And they just yeah. hit me. And it, I would say very, very important this time. And it was two things. One is phone first. Yeah. Use the phone. And the other one is calling is not an intrusion. Mm. And that is really, I mean, in today's world, it's very much email, it's Twitter, it's everything else. But actually, I think it's going back to core values. Because if you just send a client, hey, how's it going? They're not interested in replying, really. Or have you got any vacancies? But if you talk to them about their business, you get more. Yeah. So just remember, calling is not an intrusion. 
So I'll be I really, I really hope you're right. For for a long time, I used to say to people, if you want to get someone's attention, send them a fax because the, the a lot of offices would still have a fax machine, and if you put a handwritten fax and send it through, it bursts into life. It, it give them the fright of their life, uh, and yeah. you you get a response. Now these days, where no one's phoning anyone, if you phone someone out of the blue, uh, yeah. it's a bit of a treat. You know, it's yes. it's oh you oh you phone them so. But, but, so I'm really hoping that that would be true. But equally, I know that lots of folk, me included, uh, have the ringers off and they just don't hear. So they, they don't expect a phone call unless it's been prearranged in advance. Uh, it's a bit like, uh, you know, organising a play party for your kids. Uh, let's let's chat uh, at uh, four minutes past seven. Yeah, when did it all have to start being scheduled? What happened to spontaneity? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like well, drones speak I'm, to someone. They're actually delighted to speak to me, and I'm sure it's not just about me. I think it's just because it's another yeah. human being as well. I, I'm all in favour of an open door policy. Uh, if uh, if someone if someone turns up at my door or phones me out of the blue, then it's a compliment. Frankly, they're phoning me. Yeah. I should be I should be chuffed. I, I, I'm the centre of their their attention for that minute in time. Yeah, go on, sell me something, <laughs> please. Yeah. So up. next week, I will be doing more phone work and just touch your yeah. face because I need to stay close to the clients, even those that aren't doing so well yeah. at the moment, and also to find those that are. Because through every recession, I mean, you've been through a few, so have I, there are always some businesses that flourish that do do business. So I think yeah. we need to align ourselves with those, but also not forget the other ones. Yeah, because it well, it's, it's, it's usually the case that recruitment companies can really flourish through you know ups and downs, whether it's a client or candidate-led market. If there's an imbalance, then recruitment agencies are there to, uh, to, to bridge the gap. Uh, yeah. So before we finish, I just wanted to do a quick, a quick review on uh, what's happened in, in the, uh, the, the working lunch this week. Uh, on Monday, we had Louise with Justin Sleep uh, talking about uh, getting back in the game, uh, what that involves and how to stay there. Uh, GPS, Graham Powell for Smith, I had two shows this week on Tuesday, and he, he basically was traveling the world in, uh, in his shows. On, uh, on Tuesday, he had uh, uh, Breno. Uh, from Brazil, and obviously Brazil's having a seriously tough time right now with uh, with the, uh, uh, the the virus. Uh, so speaking with Breno Cordeiro uh, in uh, in Brazil about uh, his perspective on that, and then again uh, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Wednesday, I was speaking with uh, Sarah Fitzsimmons and Rich Putley uh, about uh, their uh, recruitment business in uh, in Africa, focusing on Africa and how how uh, the, uh, the the crisis is affecting things there. Yesterday, uh, for a change, I was actually uh, Deb yesterday's guest, which was a rare treat. Uh, not only to be the guest and getting to be talking and, and being us, because you know that's that's quite flattering, uh, but to be Debbie's guest because Debbie's fantastic. Uh, so uh, that was that was the week last week or this week rather. Uh, next week, I need to tell people that uh, on Monday, Louise has Catherine Robinson, the absolutely delectable Catherine, and and brainy as you can. As you can imagine, uh, Catherine Robinson, uh, everything you wanted to know about LinkedIn were afraid, but were afraid to ask. On Tuesday, uh, Graham Palfrey Smith and me are speaking with our old pal Dan McGuire, uh, uh, Mr. Broadbean, and of course now uh, uh, from uh, uh, Cube. Uh, James uh, Whitelock on Wednesday has Winston B. Clements. Winston has only recently gotten engaged, so uh, it's supposed to be uh, multiple pats in the back there. And then on Thursday next week, uh, Debbie has Emma, Freebiggle and guests, a second chance hiring, open your eyes and hopefully our mind. So uh, that's that's all lined up for next week. N this time, next week, my very special guest will be uh, Deborah Ray Burns. Uh, Deborah runs a company where she organizes events and amazing speakers. So we'll be getting into the minds of, uh, of how people uh, uh, approach speaking in the traditional sense, but also how that's changed now that everything has been done online. Uh, so that's going to be uh, really amazing next week. So uh, with that, can I say, Elke, uh, you are and have been a delight as always. Uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Uh, thanks, everyone, who's been uh, joining in on the chat on the side. Uh, I hope the tech has uh, stuck with us all the way through. Uh, have a spectacular weekend. I know I'm going to have a, one way or another, it's going to be an eventful weekend. Uh, Elke, I hope you have too. And uh, I'll see everybody next week. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you and goodbye.